Hey, what's up guys? My name's Thomas, and in collaboration with Seven Styles, we are proud to announce our new watercolor motion kit, where you can take your photos or images and turn them into amazing watercolor designs and animate them with an After Effects in just a single click. So let's see some before and afters and show you what kind of animations you can do with this watercolor motion kit. If I play on here, you can see that this first one is a reveal. So you can take your images or photos and you can have this really nice, elegant reveal where it looks like your photo or images are being painted on and, uh, and have this watercolor dripping reveal effect. The next one we have is a video freeze frame. So you can take a video and you can have this really awesome paused frame that you can have your text for titles or whatever you want within your videos. The third one is an infinite slideshow. So you can make as many slides as you want and have them back to back and kind of seamlessly integrate into each other. And then the, finally, the last one that we have is the watercolor logo sting. So you can take your logo and it'll insert it into this drop and then it'll have this nice reveal at the end of your logo. We also have uh, some assets that you can use for freelancing or other projects later that uh, anything from drips to cross hatches to brushes and then also some text reveals as well. So I'll pause it right here and in this video what we're going to be doing is going in detail with you and walking you through everything from using the Photoshop action to importing it into After Effects and working in After Effects with the project file and customizing stuff and making it your own. So we're going to be going through everything in detail so you know exactly what to do and edit in your project. So let's begin by going over the Photoshop side of things first. In this section, we're going to go over how to install the Photoshop action. So let's begin by opening up Photoshop. And within Photoshop, I want you to go to Window and Actions, and then also go to Window, Brush Presets. Now, if you go to the actions first, what I want you to do, I'm going to delete this so that it looks like what yours should look like. And then I want you to go to the top right button and then select Load Actions. And then within there, I want you to find your download from Video Hive where the watercolor motion kit is. Go to the PSD action folder and then CC plus and then select the watercolor.atn file. And that'll load in the action that we're going to be using. Now the next step that we have to do is go to the brush presets and do the same thing on the top right, except for we're going to select replace brushes. Now within here, we have to go to our download uh, and then PSD action, and then this watercolor brushes.abr file is what we're looking for. So I'm going to select that, and then that'll load in all the brushes that we need for the project. Now there's two things that we want to check before we can actually run the action. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the image is in RGB mode. So you're going to go on the top to image, mode, and then RGB color, and make sure that that's checked. And then the second thing you're going to want to do is make sure that your brush opacity is set to 100%. And how we're going to do that is we're going to go to our brush on the side here, select it, and then you can see on the top here that I have the opacity set to 30%. So you want to make sure that that's all the way to 100. And the hotkey for that is just hitting zero. All right, we are now ready to use the Photoshop action. Now that we have the Photoshop action installed and all the brushes installed, the next step is actually running the action itself. And it's so incredible what Seven Styles has done for this. It creates such an amazing result. And how we're going to actually select the area, though, is we have to create a new layer on the bottom right in the Layers panel, uh, right beside the trash can, and it'll say Layer 1. We're going to double click where the text is, and we're going to rename it Brush. And it's very important. It has to be named Brush, and it has to be all lowercase. So the next thing that we're going to do is hit B on the keyboard or on the left hand side select the brush icon right here and I'm going to change the brush color by selecting this icon right here to something that's more bright so you can easily see the brush that I'm working with. Now if you right click on here you can see that Seven Styles has set up a brush for you to be working with uh, rather than any of these brushes. These are for the action itself but this first one is for the actual uh, selecting of the area that you want to be focused for the watercolor. And you can also adjust the size in here to make things easier for you too. I'm going to hit return and you could also hit right bracket or left bracket to change the size of the brush for the hotkeys. So then we're going to go through here and making sure that our brush is at 100% opacity. I'm just going to go in and you can actually have the brush set at something else other than 100% when you're going in and selecting. Uh, but you just want to make sure that before you actually run the action that you put it back to 100%. So that's pretty close to how I want it right there. I have that main area selected with my bears. Uh, then the next step that you have to do is just go to the action itself, 
twirl that down, select watercolor, and hit play and watch as your photo or image is completely transformed. It's so incredible. You're going to love your results. So I'm going to run through it right now. It usually takes about 10 seconds and uh, you'll see the results. So these are the results that I got with the watercolor Photoshop action. So let's twirl that up and you can see that we have all these in a, a nice folder set up for you and we still have the brush layer and we can see that if we turn that off that it's back to our original image. So the cool thing that he's done is he set it up so that you can just delete this and then edit the brush if you want or redo the brush and then run the action again until you get the results that you want. So I'll undo that. Now, as far as the Photoshop action goes, this is as far as this tutorial is going to go with it because basically you have all the stuff that you need at this point to import your design into After Effects. But if you want to dig deeper into this, uh, Seven Cells has a really great tutorial that goes much deeper. It's, it's uh, over a half hour in length and it gives you a really nice breakdown of all the different layers. And for people who are familiar with Seven Cells Photoshop actions, there is a ton of customization that you can do within here. And I just want to note that all of the customization that you can do in Photoshop, you can do later in After Effects. So I don't want you to get too hung up on editing the project in Photoshop. Most of the editing I want you to do in After Effects. And I've set it up so it's very similar so that you won't have a hard time recognizing where or how to edit things. But there is one layer that I do want you to take a look at. And that is this layer with the black mat. It's the Reveal Normal Photo Brush Mask layer. And what this particular layer does is it basically allows you to uh, paint an area where you don't want the watercolor action to be affected by as much. So let's go in and select this black mat layer. And I'm going to change the brush to white. And I'm going to hit B. Now, if I paint over this, you can see that I'm actually revealing the area. And this is a kind of an extreme example, just so you can see what's going on. So I'll undo that. But if you put your brush at like 50%, if you hit the 5 on the keyboard, and we go over a certain area, you can see that we can kind of bring out some details that we might have lost with the action. So this is all discretionary, but this step is much easier to do in Photoshop than it is in After Effects. You can still do it later, but I just recommend doing this particular step if you want to kind of reveal more of the original photo uh, with your designs. And again, if you want more information on uh, the Photoshop side of things and, and more of a uh, in-depth description of all the different layers, Seven Styles does a great job of going into it in detail. So the link below will bring you to that tutorial. All right, so we have our design all ready to go. It's ready to animate. The next step that we have to do is we have to export from Photoshop to bring it into After Effects. And we've created a motion kit exporter that makes this process really simple. But one step that I want you to do before you run the exporter is I want you to crop the design. And the reason why we're going to be doing that is just to eliminate any unnecessary pixels to make After Effects run as efficiently as possible. Now we have two different resolutions within After Effects. We have HD or 4K, so 1920 by 1080 or 3840 by 2160. So how we're going to be uh, converting our designs into that is we're going to hit C or we're going to go on the left hand side to the crop tool right here and then on the top left I want you to go to the drop down and select W by H by resolution. And then the next box I want you to put 1920 picks and then the next box by 1080 picks and then by 72. And then once we have all that in there, just uh, make sure that the bounding box is in the area that you want to be for your design within After Effects that's going to be animated and then hit return. And just a quick note, you don't necessarily have to crop it. I just recommend cropping it. You can still, it's just a lot of times people will have a really vertical image from the Photoshop action and you might not want all those extra pixels in there if you're working with an HD or 4K video setting. So that's just something to kind of help maximize uh, your workflow in After Effects to, to remove any pixels that you're not necessarily using. All right, so now it's time to run the motion kit exporter. So the first thing we have to do is we have to load it in, just like we did for the watercolor action. Select the menu button and then go to load actions. And then within the load actions, go to your download and then the PSD action and then go to this motion kit exporter.atn and click open. And that will load the motion kit exporter. Now what you have to do is select this run this action uh, layer and then just hit play. And I'm going to do it with you so that you can see exactly what's going to happen. It usually has a spinning wheel come up because it does a couple things in the background. Um, and then it will come up with a dialogue that tells you uh, some steps. And to say let's just go to the next step and I'll walk you through it quick. 
So the first thing you want to do when it has this export layers to files is you're going to want to tell where you want the layers saved to. So in this example, I'm going to save them to my desktop. You can save them wherever you want. So I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop and we're going to name this uh, tutorial layers. Okay. And then hit open. And how I have it right now is exactly how you want it to look. You want these layers checked right here, visible layers only, include ICC profile. You want to make sure that transparency is checked and sometimes uh, trim layers is selected by default. You want to make sure that you don't have trim layers selected. So if this is selected, unselect it. Uh, so it looks exactly like my screen. And then you're going to hit run and it's going to do its thing. It's going to go through and export all the different layers that we're going to be working with for our motion kit in After Effects. And it usually takes, depending on if you're doing HD or uh, 4K or, or something larger or smaller, I would say for an HD on average, it probably takes about 30 seconds. For 4K, probably two minutes, depending on your computer, maybe a minute if it's you have a faster computer. Now after it's finished running, it'll go back to exactly the way it looked before you ran it. So you can go in and export a few different examples if you want. And I just recommend to make sure to to keep things organized and put each exported uh, design into a new folder. Don't stack them all into the same folder. You'll start to get a headache from trying to figure out which files which. So just make sure for every new export, you're creating a new layer. All right, that is everything on the Photoshop side. In the next section, we're gonna be going over installing the Motion Kit in After Effects. Now it's time to install the Motion Kit. And it's a really simple install. All we have to do is just bring the, the install files into our script UI panels. So let's go through that together. I have on the top finder window, my watercolor download with the AE install files that we're gonna be installing. And on the bottom finder window, I have my version of After Effects that I'm working with. And the watercolor motion kit works back to After Effects CC. Uh, on a Mac, you'd go to your computer, Mac HD applications. So you're gonna wanna find that on your computer. And then when you found the After Effects version that you're working with, go to Scripts, and then within Scripts, go to Script UI Panels, and then within the Script UI Panels folder, you want to drop those two uh, files into there, the Motion Kit Assets and also the Watercolor Motion Kit JSX Bin file into this folder, the Script UI Panels folder. All right, so now that we have the right files in place, the next step that we have to do is go into After Effects. So let's load that up, and then we have to do one more step. We have to go to our Preferences. So I'll go to uh, After Effects CC Preferences General, and within our Preferences, is setting, uh, what you want to make sure is you want to have allow scripts to write files and access network. You want to make sure that's checked and then click OK. And you may have to restart it um, if you didn't have that selected already. And then all you have to do is go to Window and in the very bottom, Watercolor Motion Kit and select that. And it'll bring up the panel for the Watercolor Motion Kit. And then we can dock that. So we'll just grab and then you can uh, kind of bring it around wherever you want. I'm going to dock it with the Effects Controls panel on the top there just to kind of save room for the tutorial. But uh, you can see now we're all ready to go and ready to animate our design. Now before we dig into actually animating our design, I just want to quickly go over with you the Watercolor Motion Kit UI panel. If we twirl down the 4K and the HD and the assets, you can see that the 4K and the HD have the exact same animation categories. So if you are used to working with like the reveal and HD, you'll know that the exact same thing is going on in all the different layers for the 4K. The only difference is the resolution. The other thing I wanted to mention too is just within these assets, you can import these assets whenever. You don't have to have any designs or anything from Photoshop to work with these. So you can import these into your freelance projects or, or anything you want to make with the, the water color designs that I've created for you within here. All right, so let's actually animate our design now. I'm going to go to HD and I'm going to be working with HD in all of these sections just because it's faster to work with. And within HD, I'm going to go to the reveal because it's kind of like the most standard, uh, nice, elegant reveal of our watercolor design. Now, all we have to do is animate it is just click on reveal. And first, it's going to ask us, uh, please enter the folder name. So I'm just trying to help keep things organized with this. So the folder name that we're going to have for this, let's just name it uh, bear because uh, it's a bear that we had in that example. And this is going to ask you to name the composition. So it's just two elements to make sure that we're, uh, we're keeping things organized because if we imported multiple examples of reveals, we want to make sure that we don't get them confused with each other. So I'll name this one bear. Now it's going to ask me, please select image sequence file to replace. So actually what we're doing is we're importing in After Effects our design as an image sequence. Let's go to our design on the desktop. 
I have it and then within the tutorial layers folder and now you want to select the first layer within this sequence and there should be 30 layers within there with the watercolor motion kit it should be specifically 30 not 29 not 31 but 30 and you want to select the first layer not the, any other layer except for the first layer and hit open now it'll do its thing. It'll create all the layers, all the settings, all the presets. It basically works uh, kind of like a Photoshop action, really, where it goes in and it recreates everything step by step exactly how I want it for you guys to animate. So you don't have to technically do anything at this point. You could just hit render and it'd be good to go. All right, so it's finished up now. And the first thing I want you to do once it's finished up every time is change the playback resolution from full to half. I found that half is just a good speed uh, with quality and, and resolution. And then the other thing I want you to do is go to this source name. If it says source name and make sure uh, to click it so it says layer name because we're looking for layer name. I've uh, changed a bunch of the different layers on here to help kind of guide you in different sections so that you know what you're working with. And if you just have it on source name, uh, you don't want that. So make sure it's on layer name. So now if we scrub the timeline a little bit, you can see that our reveal is starting to show at the beginning. And then in the middle, we see a little bit more, a little bit more. And then finally, at the end, we have our final reveal at 300 frames. And the project is set up at 30 frames per second. So it's about 10 seconds that this reveal happens. Let's go up to the uh, let's go up to the project panel. And you'll notice that I'll twirl all these up that we have our bear folder. And then within, the, within that bear folder that we created, we have our assets folder. And within the assets folder, we have a, a bunch of different folders. The first one is the design elements. Now, within the design elements folder, we have all the different uh, assets. If you notice from the, the watercolor motion kit, within uh, the brushes, drips, and textures, these are just already loaded in there for you. So if you wanna use these at any time in your project, you can. You don't have to load them from this panel. And then below that, we have footage, images, mats, PSD image sequence. One thing to note with this, with the PSD image sequence, is that you can at any time replace this with any other design that you've exported from Photoshop. So for example, if you've created another export with a watercolor Photoshop action, you can go in here and select the layer, the PSD image sequence, right click and select replace footage file and then find on your desktop wherever you saved the new layers and select the first layer within that sequence and then hit open and it'll replace and you won't have to do anything else it should just animate and the cool thing is you get really custom looking results every single time with all the different images that you use all right so we'll twirl that up and now let's just briefly go over the different layers within here in the different sections and within the effects controls panel let's pull that up if you're not seeing the effect controls go to window effect controls and you'll see that we have first the layout controls now I would recommend editing these if you're used to After Effects if you're not used to them you shouldn't have to worry about them uh, it has the parallax controller basically what I've done is I've taken the layers from Photoshop and I've grouped them into five separate groups and by taking these different groups and pulling different ones further back in Z space or in the in the distance uh, it creates parallax and it creates depth within your images and you shouldn't have to worry about it but for advanced users just know that you can use this symbol parallax editor and it'll push the the background back even further while leaving the foreground in the same spot you just want to make sure that when you're editing the parallax or editing the scale or anything like that that you never have any edges showing uh, and that's kind of more so for advanced stuff and i'm trying to keep this really simple for you guys if you have individual questions and you're used to after effects i am more than happy to answer any questions you have so let's just continue on the next section we have is the camera and if you're not used to working with a camera in after effects you really shouldn't have to worry about touching this at all except for in some of the videos uh, like for example with the freeze frame maybe or the slideshow you might want to have to edit those in certain parts and I'm gonna go over that in detail with you but just know that you really shouldn't have to mess with this much but if you do want to work with it within all my products I always kind of set up this basic rig where within the effects controls panel if you select the camera no that you can adjust the depth of field the camera aperture the focus distance you can you can adjust that really simply with this and you also have a lot of little details that you can adjust if I slide this over just a little bit you can see that you can quickly adjust the kind of camera shakiness the point of interest the the zoom randomness just to kind of add that organic feel to the camera and the basic setting that I have for you is a nice subtle uh, camera shake but if you want it off you can just set these to zero and it will uh, it will not move at all 
All right, below that, we have our layer editor layers. And these are kind of like the main layers. If you're used to the seven styles, Photoshop actions, uh, these are the main settings for you, except for you don't really have to dig into them to get to these different settings. Everything from the color correction settings, you can adjust those right here in the effects control panel. You can change the, the overall tint really quickly. Uh, you can adjust the, the photo edges. Now by default, everything is twirled down. So if I hit command A within there, I can twirl them all up at one time. Now I have these dividers set in here just to kind of help organize things and so you don't kind of get lost in seeing all the different things. You can clearly see different sections of elements. Most textures and elements within here have a basic enable or disable switch and a basic opacity switch. So you can pretty easily go in and play with some of those settings if you want. Uh, and you can also go in and you can play with the coloring. So you can go in and change uh, the color of some of the background brushes very simply. Let's do one for example. I'll twirl all these up and I kept all the naming conventions the exact same as what 7 Styles layers were in Photoshop. Go to the layer, to the opacity, and you can turn the opacity on 100% for the color. Now you can see that that brush that we had in there um, is showing up and we can change the color of that really easily by selecting the color picker. So again, a lot of really simple stuff that you can edit and really customize it to make it your own. So I'll undo those steps and then we can keep going down. Uh, we just have all the different, there are tons of elements to, to customize in here. There's really no point in me going individually over all of them. Most of them just have to do with uh, the way the layers interact with each other and the actual brushes themselves and the colors of the brushes. And then below that we have some foreground elements and some background elements and that's basically the structure for all of them. It's just this exact same setup with slight modifications. So there's no need to feel intimidated by anything. It's all a really simple setup in After Effects. Just go in, look on the effect controls panel and uh, play around. See if you can find a different setting that you like. And one more thing is I just want to mention quick that to create this motion kit, I used a script called Comp Code. And I'll put a link to it below the video. But just know that it is very impressive what Thomas has done, the author of Comp Code. I love it. And I think that it's an amazing tool for After Effects authors. And I can't say enough good things about Comp Code. So definitely check that out if you have a chance. So now we're going to be digging individually into all the different animation categories. We're going to go over the reveal, the text, the logo sting, the freeze frame, the assets that are included quickly, and then the, the rendering. Now in the last section, we kind of went over the basics of the reveal itself. But there is a couple more things I do want to go over with you in this that are kind of unique to the reveal. And uh, just a couple more things I want to go in more detail into. And the first one is that I actually do have shy layers turned on. Now if you're not used to After Effects, it's this button right here. And what this button does is it essentially hides layers so that uh, it keeps things more organized. So if you have a whole bunch of layers, like in this project, you can shy them or hide them. And if you click the button, it'll reveal all the layers again. So it helps to keep things organized. But if you turn that off, you'll notice that there are quite a few more layers than what you saw before. So I'll twirl them up. And right now, I believe we're dealing with 100, yeah, 107 layers. But if you turn the shadow layers back on, it'll kind of go back to just the basics of what you need to work with it. But there are a couple layers I do want to go over with you in here, and that is these layers below the foreground. Now, within uh, the reveal, or really any of the elements within this project, for example, you can go in and each different layer has a displacement associated with it. So you can see that these two layers are a group together. These two are a group together. Now, if you went in and you adjusted this and you move these layers over, you would get a different result than if you had it where I put it. And that's cool. You can move these around. Let's say you want some of the, the different elements to come in faster. You can, you can adjust these and move these around. So that's one way you can customize it. So I'll turn the shy layers back on. And the one thing that I always want to go over in all these different categories is how do you change the duration? Because let's say you want it faster than 300 frames or, or longer than 300 frames for your video file. So I'm going to hold option and go back on my wheel and zoom back. So you can see if I hit command K, that right now I have the duration set to 900 frames. And at 900 frames, if the project is set up at 30 frames per second, that means that this is at 30 seconds. But this right here, uh, this is actually where it would animate to if you hit 
to render it right now. It would only go to this frame right here, frame 300. Now, throughout the project, I've added markers to tell you uh, or help you out in letting you know when stuff happens or, or isn't happening or what you should do. So you'll notice this first marker says reveal complete, and that's where um, the work area is set to. Now, you can drag this over, and when you go to render it, it will render to that area. Now let's say, for example, you wanted to extend this further. Well, I wouldn't really recommend, if you disable the shy layers, I wouldn't recommend adjusting these mats too much. Um, you can, you can kind of pull some of them back to have the reveal spread out more. Um, so like, for example, what you would do with that is you would take uh, these layers and moving all of them over would extend the, the duration of time that the reveal happens, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, so for the most part, the way I have it set up is by far the best recommendation for the duration of the composition that you want. For some, like the slideshow for example, I knew that people would want to be able to extend that easily. But for the reveal itself, I wouldn't recommend messing too much with the compositions and, and the settings that I have set up for you. I would just, if you want it longer, extend this out. The camera will continue to kind of shake around for as long as you have the duration. And I wouldn't recommend having this any shorter. If you do want it shorter, what I would recommend is to, instead of using the reveal, to use the slideshow. and make a reveal from a slide because that effect happens within about three seconds as opposed to this which is about 10 seconds. So you don't get as elegant of a reveal but you also get the result much quicker. In this section we're going to go over how to edit the drips and the text. So let's begin by going over the text. And now within almost all the animations I have a text set up for you. You might not be seeing it but that's because I have them off by default. So what you're going to have to do is go to the foreground layers and then within there find the text and if it's not enabled by default, you're going to have to click on the eye icon. So we'll have the text come up there. Now in order to demonstrate the two different text moments that I have set up for you, I'm going to create a new composition. So you don't have to worry about this, just, uh, just know I'm creating an HD composition. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create from the watercolor motion kit the text version 1. So I'm just double clicking on that and it's creating the text. Now text version 1 has the brushes behind it. So it's really nice for like standing out the text and, uh, and if you have a lot of elements going on, this can help to have your text pop a little bit more. Now I'll delete that for right now and we'll put it in text version 2 so you can see the difference between the two. This one is more so just the text itself. So this has, uh, maybe if you have more of a minimal design that this will stick out a little bit better for you. So we're going to go over version 1 and then version 2 right after that. So let's start off by going over version 1. So I'm going to bring these up and I'm going to find text version 1, drag it into there. You'll notice that it says text version 1 and then it has step 1, insert text, step 2, edit brushes, and then this main composition. And that's the order that I always want you to do this stuff in, is as, as much as I can to try and do things step by step so that you don't miss anything. So let's go to step 1, insert text. And we'll change this text. I'm going to hit Command T and I'm going to highlight this text and we're just going to put um, tutorial in there. Let's make it two words though. Let's name it watercolor tutorial. And we'll kind of center that up a little bit. And I'm going to close these panels so that we have as much room as possible. Now I'm going to go to step two, edit brushes. So what this step is, is it actually has a guide layer within here. Now what a guide layer is, without getting too um, uh, detailed, is you can't see the guide layer in the final result. It's just to help guide you or show you something in this composition that isn't in the following final renders. All right, so uh, you don't have to worry about that. It's just to, this guide layer is showing you where the text is because in this step, our main goal is to edit and position the brushes where we want them. So right now we have three different brushes in there and I would recommend probably one brush per text. So we're only going to need two brushes in here and I'll delete one of those and then what we're going to do is just kind of position these over. So I'm just going to grab brush three and move it over and I might want to rotate it so I'm going to hit R and then I'm going to rotate that over and then hit S because I want to scale it up. I'll bring that, maybe position it, just something like that. And then same for brush five, this brush to the left here, I'm going to hit S, scale it up, rotate it and move it over. 
Now they can overlap. They're, that's totally cool. Um, I probably wouldn't have, I'm going to disable the, the first one for just a second. I wouldn't have too much of the brush uh, on the second text part or vice versa. You kind of want to have the brushes as, as singled as possible per text. All right. And then also you want to make sure within here that you have these uh, set to multiply on the, the brushes. Okay, so now we have this done. I'll turn that brush back on. So, so far, nothing too crazy. Go back to step one. All we did was we just changed this text with our own text, and then we went into step two, and we edited the brushes uh, to be in the positions where we want, and then now we're gonna go into text version one, this main composition. Now, you can kinda go in and customize this even further. So, we'll, there's quite a few layers in here, so let's go through them individually. The first layer we have is the text color. Now, if we bring up the effect controls panel, and again, if you're not seeing that, go to window, effect controls. So, the first layer that we have is our text color. Now, this can be completely customized in the effect controls panel, and you can just select this color picker right there, and you can change this to whatever color you want for your text. The next is the displacement. You shouldn't have to worry about that. The next layer are the drips, and that is these drips that are happening right here. And so you're going to have to go in and customize the position of where those are. So I'm going to uh, highlight that layer, and I'm just going to move over this to a spot where it would make sense where the drips should be. And if you don't want them, you can either delete them or you can hit the eye icon and disable them. Or uh, let's say since we only have two text moments, maybe three would be too many drips. So I'll disable that middle one. And then finally, I'll go to this drip one and I'll move this to right there. Okay. And then uh, this is kind of a fun step after. You don't have to worry about the text matter or insert text here layer. But if we go to the brush colors layer, you can very easily change the colors of this to whatever you want. So let's maybe make it like a blue and green and purple design. Something like that. And then this is using a, a four color gradient effect and doesn't really matter. But one thing that is kind of cool about this is you can take, if you have the four color gradient highlighted in the effect controls panel, you can grab one of the corners and move it so you can more easily customize how you want the, the layout to look like. So that's how you would customize the brush colors. And then finally, we have these drop motions. And if I zoom in, I'm going to hold Option and scroll my mouse wheel in. I'm going to drag my current time indicator over. You can see that about the frame right before it drops, we have these, um, these drop motions. And this just adds a little bit of extra motion right before the drop hits. Now, by default, I have three drops, if you remember, in step two. So we don't need this middle one in here. If we go back to step two, I just want to make sure that you really understand what's going on with this. And we zoom into here, you can see that these are just staggered a little bit where these brush three and brush five come in and hit. So all we're doing is we're matching up the drop motion. So you might have to add more drop motions depending on how many text elements you have within there. Now this one got a little bit off, so you can see that what we want is actually for our text to be revealed and then drop into it. So this last layer is coming on too fast. So we need to grab it and drag it over to probably about right there. Actually to about right there. So what actually ended up happening was uh, I disabled the wrong one. I should have disabled this one and not this one. But it was a good example to show you what, what you can do if you customize uh, in step two, if you customize the position in the timeline of when this comes on at. Because you can customize it however you want, but I just try to set things up so that you don't have to customize them any more than, than what you need to. So we'll go in and I'll enable this second one. So now what should happen is this drip comes in and hits right before the, the brush reveals the text but we have to actually move it over because it's a little bit too far to the left because of that other brush that I had set up was centered more. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the drop motion and we're going to drag it over to somewhere like right about there. We'll see how it lands. Maybe a little bit more. There. Now, if we play this back, ram preview it by hitting zero, we can see that we have our animation coming to life with really very little work. And I love the effect that this has with the organic way that the text kind of forms. If you look in here close up, where the watercolor is, it's like the, the 
water drops form that text. So that is the basic setup for this. Uh, we're going to just go in, insert our text, edit the brushes in the background, and then finally we're gonna go in and um, adjust the drips and any other things we want to customize in here. And again, if you don't want to mess with any of this stuff, it is 100% fine to disable the drips or you can just delete them and delete the drop motion and you're done. Like you just, you insert your text, you edit the brushes and you're done. You don't have to do anything else. So now let's go over text version two. So I'm going to go back to the that just comp one that we created. I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna to go to text version two. Now you'll see that we have the exact same thing. We have our insert or text, insert brushes, and text version two. So I'm gonna drag text version two into that comp that we created. And you can see that's kind of similar in here. So we'll go in and we'll just recreate again that text that we had. So we'll name it watercolor tutorial. Make sure it's kind of centered up a little bit. All right, so we have step one done. Now step two, insert brushes. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna delete one of the brushes. You can see that they kind of go in order. This, this one hits first, and then this second one, and then this third one comes on last. So let's, um, let's say for example, in this one though, that we don't want either brush three or four. What we're going to do is we're going to replace the brushes. If you're not used to After Effects, you, you've never replaced anything in After Effects before. And it's a pretty simple process. All we're going to have to do is grab one of the compositions and I'm going to right click and select Reveal Layer Source in Project. Now, once we have the Reveal Layer Source in Project, we can see that that is where Brush 4 is. But let's say instead of Brush 4, we want this to be Brush 5. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select brush five. So in the project panel, making sure that the new layer that we want is highlighted. And in the timeline, making sure that uh, the old layer that we want replaced is highlighted. We're gonna hold option on a Mac or control on a PC. And we're gonna click, drag, drop, and release. And that will replace the brush with the, the new brush. So you have five brushes to choose from in here. And you can use this trick in a bunch of different spots within here. Like you can replace the, the drip textures I'm gonna show you in a minute. You can replace um, a bunch of things. So just know that that's how you replace composition or design elements within this project. All right, so let's disable brush three, this middle one, and I'm gonna adjust these and scale them up. Actually, instead of using this third one, I'm gonna have it so that it just hits on this one and then goes right away into this brush three. So I'm gonna scale the second one up by hitting S, scale it up, rotate it around. Now this one's a little bit different than the other ones if you remember because this one doesn't actually have the brushes um, in the background, it's just the text. So the main important element in this is not so much the layout of the brush as it is the actual uh, making sure that the brush covers the entire size of the text. So what I mean by that is now if we go to step version two, if I right here select this uh, little tab, text version two, we can see that we are in fact having our whole text covered. So that's perfect, that's exactly what we want. We'll notice that uh, we have a very similar setup as before, except for we don't have a text color. Now it's just the brush colors. So we can customize this however we want, and maybe we'll make that just blue and purple, something like that. Now we just go down the list. Do we want the drop motion? Well, we don't want this one because this one comes after and we chose the, the one before. So we know that this layer or this drop is going to come down and reveal this first one and the second drop is going to come down and reveal the tutorial part. So we actually want to move this over to the right a little bit. So something like that. And then we don't have to worry about the text or the displacement. And then the splatter, this is something custom to this. And you can see that right after the text hits, the splatter comes on. So right here, no splatter. And then this frame right here, splatter. No splatter, splatter. Now we don't want this splatter anymore because we got rid of that third text spot. So we'll just disable that. And then we have the drip textures below that. So I'll just go to the end uh, when they're totally revealed on. And we have this drip texture right here, this one right here, and this one right here. So let's say for this example, we do want three textures. It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna take this uh, drip texture three and move this somewhere onto um, the text. And then take this one and move it onto this spot right here. 
and then this one and we'll move that one maybe to here okay so now we've kind of uh, understand the workflow of working with text and how we're gonna have to kind of customize some elements but if you don't want to customize anything that's totally cool you can just delete these or disable them delete the splatters or disable them and delete the drips and disable them that's only for um, people who feel comfortable with it or really want that unique custom text feel to it but we'll go back to uh, to the bare composition that we were working with. And I'm gonna clean up all these tabs. So I'm gonna select this and go to close other panels and group. If we go into text, you can see that we have the exact same setup as text version one. So there's nothing new in here. But if we go in, and I'm gonna delete text version one and text version two in the project panel so that we don't get confused about anything. If I twirl bare, folder down and we go to text, you can see that we have this exact same setup as what we had before. So all you have to do is just enable the text on here and then go to text one and edit the text and text two and edit the brushes and then go into the text and that's it. So you can see that this is the exact same setup as text version one and two. Um, and let's say for this example, you did want text version two instead of text one like what we have in here all you have to do is just go to the watercolor motion kit is just highlight the bare comp and that's important if you don't have it highlighted and you double click on text version one it's going to say you have to select a composition first and that's because it wants to place the text into the composition but it doesn't know which one you want it to be placed into so you have to tell it i want it into this composition and double click text version two and it's going to add that into there now, rather than just inserting it into there, which is what it did, and that's pretty much what we wanted, let's delete that. Now, by deleting it in the project panel, that's different than deleting it in the timeline. So if we just delete it right now, it's not deleted from the project panel. It's still in there. So what we're going to do instead of that is we're just going to go to the text and we're going to replace the text with the new text version 2 that we had just added to the project panel. So how we're going to do that again is having in the project panel the new layer highlighted and in the timeline the old layer highlighted holding option on a Mac or control on a PC. We're going to click, drag and drop that on top of there. Now you can see that we have text version 2 in there instead. And that's how I did it in the demo too with that one scene with the, the man profile. Okay, let's go over quick the uh, the drips because that's really simple. I'll disable the text and enable the drips. And once uh, you understood how it worked with, with the text, it's really simple. All you have to do is just enable it. And you can see that it's not in the correct position. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the drips. And we just really have two layers in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is close these panels in here so we have a little bit more room. And what you're going to notice right away is that we have two different layers. We have this drip texture 2 and this bare layer, uh, which whatever the name of your file is. It's just a black and white image. But the point of this black and white image is to show you where you should put the drip at. So if you want to place the drip, what I recommend is to put it on a dark spot. So what you're going to do is grab the drip layer, the drip texture 2, and bring it to a dark spot, like maybe right here. Or maybe you could place it up here by the ear, somewhere where there's a darker spot. It doesn't have to match up exactly with the colors. Um, and I just want to go over this really quick. If you go to Drip Texture 2, right click and go to Reveal Layer Source and Project, uh, that has different textures that drip textures that you could use. So let's say, for example, we wanted this Drip Texture 4 instead of Drip Texture 2. We're just going to holding Option, replace that. And then now we've replaced it with a different drip texture. And we could put that somewhere. And let's say we wanted to add a second drip in here. So what we could do is we could just take drip texture 5 and just drop it into there. Now it's, it's much too large. So let's look at the scale of the original one. I'll hit S. The scale was 25%. So you're going to go to the new one and change that to 25% as well. And then we're just going to click and drag and place that somewhere uh, where there's a darker spot. Maybe like right there. Now, all we have to do is go back to the main composition that we were working with. And you might notice that uh, that they might not be the, the same color as what we're working with. So all you have to do for that is just go to the drips layer and then go to the effect controls layer. If you're not seeing that, again, go to window, effect controls, and then go to the fill. And within the fill, there's a color picker. And you just have to select the color 
of the dark spot that you're working with and it should match up really well. In this section, I'm going to go over how to edit the logo sting with your logo or image. And it's a really simple setup. Basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running the Photoshop action on your logo and then scaling it down and then bringing it into After Effects. And basically, you're done at that point. You can customize a couple things on it, but this one's really simple. So let's begin by importing your logo into Photoshop. And I recommend using a vector version of your logo if possible. You don't have to use a vector, but we're going to be scaling this up quite a bit. And the larger we can scale this the better the results we're gonna get so let's start out by importing it and I have mine right here from the demo that I did and what I want you to do is create a new uh, Photoshop document go to file new and then within there I want you to make one that is 5,000 pixels wide by 2,813 pixels high and the dimensions we just want to be 16 by 9 and the 5,000 width is a little bit arbitrary we just want it something large so we'll hit OK and I'm going to take my logo into here and just drag it into the new composition that we created. And I'm going to scale this up and center it. And that looks pretty good. That's about the size that you want because you kind of have to think ahead to the final logo reveal. I mean, the size that this is going to be is going to be the size that it is. Maybe that might be a little bit large. So we'll do something like that. And if you did have your logo as a vector, I want you to right click it and click rasterize layer. And then we'll rename that layer um, background. So we'll delete the layer one. So now we just have the, the background layer. And then I'm going to hit Command J. And that's going to create a duplicate of that layer. And I'm going to rename this layer Brush. All right. So now all we have to do is go to our action. And we will run the action. So I'm going to run this. And then I'm going to be right back. And these are the results that I got right out of the box from the kit. So what we're going to do is go in to that uh, black matte layer, the reveal normal photo. And I'm just going to paint in and reveal a little bit more of the layer, the original. Maybe kind of, it's a balancing act. I go back and forth, adding a little bit, subtracting a little bit, adding a little bit, subtracting a little bit. I think this looks pretty good. Maybe something like that. So the next step that we would have to do is, I'll twirl that up, is we're going to be cropping this down because it's very large right now. If I hit Command 1 and show actual pixels, it's pretty large. So we'll go back and I'm going to be working with the HD logo reveal. So I'm just going to go to, uh, I'll hit C to crop. I'll zoom back a little bit. And you can see that I have the bounding box on there. I have the W by H by resolution set to 1920 by 1080 by 72 pixels per inch. So all the settings are exactly what I want right now. So then all I have to do is hit return. And it's going to, uh, and then hit the checkbox. I'm sorry. So two steps. And it's going to go through and it's going to uh, crop everything down to the proper dimensions that we're looking for. And I'm going to zoom in. So this is the actual pixels right now. So it's about the perfect size that I'm looking for. And then I'm just going to run the motion kit exporter. So run this action, I'm going to hit play. It's going to think for just a second. It's going to do a couple things in the background. And then it is going to bring up the prompt to ask me where I want my layers exported to. I'm going to click continue on here. And then I'm going to say, let's go to the desktop and let's do a uh, logo example. And then we'll hit open. And then I'm going to have visible layers on. So everything looks great. Make sure trim is unchecked. So everything is, is perfect. I'm going to hit run. And it's going to do its thing. And I'm going to fast forward so you don't have to watch all this. And export to layers was successful. Click OK. It reverts back to before we exported it out. Now you can save this if, if you want as a Photoshop document just in case you want to edit it later or whatever. It's totally up to you. I'm just going to close it for now. Don't save. Don't save. Now I'm going to go into After Effects. So now using the watercolor motion kit, all we have to do is just uh, double click on our logo sting within here. So we'll go to HD and logo sting and double click on there. And it's going to ask, where are the, the files that we saved from Photoshop? And we'll go to the logo example and I'll click into there and hit open. And then it's going to do its thing. It's going to create all the layers that we need and uh, all the presets and everything. And it usually takes, again, about, I don't know, 15 seconds or so. Um, I'm not even going to fast forward this. I'm just going to leave it in real time so that you can see that it doesn't really take that long. Now, if we go to the project panel, you can see that we have uh, all the layers that we have to twirl up. Uh, but we have some compositions here, step one through four. So the first thing is step one, edit logo, optional. So what you want to do in here is you want to make sure that the composition of this is fitting within this rectangle. And it looks like uh, ours is just a little bit outside the box. So I'm going to hit S 
and scale this down just a little bit and bring it over. And what this part is doing is it's actually preparing for the drip. So we're getting our, our composition set up so that when the our logo goes into the drip, it's positioned properly. Now that the layer is fitting within the composition, we'll go to step two, edit the logo drop mat. And what this step actually does is it makes an edge transparent on your logo. And the point of this is because when it's in the drop in the first part of the logo sting, you don't want the edges sharp. You want them to be kind of transparent so that it looks like it lives within the drop itself. So as of right now, this is actually pretty good. I wouldn't probably edit this at all, but let's just say that I wanted to reveal less of the edges. I would select the shape layer one, hit S for scale, and scale this down. And you can see that the edges become uh, more and more transparent to the point where we can't even see them. But I'll undo that. So that's how you would uh, that's how you would adjust that step. I would just adjust the scale on here. And then you can go to the fast blur within the effects controls panel and uh, adjust the blurriness that I have set up on there. I wouldn't recommend touching that, but uh, you can if you want to. And then we have step three, edit the drop. Now within here, we have a couple different things we can edit. Uh, so I'm gonna bring the current time indicator and just drag it over a little bit. And I'm also gonna set the playback resolution to half. And I'm also gonna change the transparency and toggle it off so you can see more easily what's going on. And the first thing that I want you to, to take note within this edit drop layer is this displacement. And you can see I have a note on here, adjust displacement advanced. And I would just recommend not touching this if you don't have to, or if you're not familiar with After Effects. But if you want to, you can hit U on there and you can see that I have a couple keyframes set. And uh, you can adjust the offset on here a little bit if you want. That's the animated property. And that's what's kind of creating that refraction that's making it look like like the logo is living within the drop. The other thing that you can adjust within here is I'll hit U to twirl that up and on the water drop itself we have this marker. Add your logo color to tritone here. And you can see in the effect controls panel and again if you're not seeing that window effect controls that we have the directional blur. You don't have to worry about that one but the tritone. And I'll hit U and you can see that we have some keyframes associated with this. And what I want you to do on this part is I want you to go to the tritone and you can adjust these to change it to your colors. So for example, in the demo I had this going to kind of like a, a pink purple color. And so it's looking like it's kind of dissolving into the drop before it hits. So how you would do that then is just go to the tritone and you can play around with this. Just take the color picker and the tritone effect takes the, the highlights, shadows, and midtones, and it, it adjusts them based on the colors that we select rather than being white, gray, and black. So we'll go in and we can edit this. We can change it to like maybe a, a lighter color, and maybe that's just enough that you, uh, you want. Or maybe you just don't want to touch this at all and you want it to stay blue. That's cool too. And the last step, step four, edit logo reveal mat. Uh, this one is just where the logo is being splashed onto once the, the drip hits our canvas. And so we wanna make sure, uh, you can just follow along on here, adjust scale, but do not adjust position of this brush. So that, that's pretty important. You don't want to adjust the position of this because there's no way to adjust where the first drop hits. It's directly centered on there. And again, from watching the text tutorial, we're kinda used now to working with this brush matte effect. So I'll go to layer four right now, and I'm just gonna move this one over. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to uh, adjust this so that it's just filling up our logo. So I'm gonna hit R for rotation, and I'm gonna move this one just so it kind of matches more so what's happening with our logo. And then I'm gonna scale this one up on brush five, uh, layer five, and we'll make sure that we have all the tails selected. And I'm gonna go back to brush two, layer four. I'm just gonna bring this up and maybe scale it down a little bit. There, I think that looks good right there. All right, so then the last step that we have to do is just go back to our logo sting, and we can see uh, with the current time indicator here what's going on. I'll bring this to half resolution. And the first thing that I would probably do within this is I would move the text down. And so I'm gonna go down to, I'll hit the layer name, so we can see all the different sections that I have set up for you. And we'll go down to the text and I'll bring that down. Or what you could do is you could go back to uh, step four, edit logo reveal mat, and I could bring this up. And then the last thing that you would wanna do is adjust, if you wanna add any drips, you can add them here. 
and the drops. So you can see that I have two drops set up in there. So there's like the main initial drop that you can't really control. And then there's the two side drops that are a little bit different than the other drops. The other drops were named drop motion and these are just named drop. Uh, the drops on here though are different than the other ones that we've seen. These ones are more round and more detailed than the other ones. So all we have to do for these is just take it. So we can see on this frame that we have uh, that brush hasn't hit yet for the beginning part of the logo. And if we go over one frame, so we can see this drop that we have highlighted on layer 31, we have to bring over just a little bit to the left. And we'll go one frame ahead. It looks pretty good, maybe a little bit more. And then we'll go to the next one. So we can see that the center of this brush is right about here. So that's where we want the other drop to be, maybe a little bit higher so it looks like it's falling right in that spot. And that's really close. I wouldn't even touch that one either. So at this point, all we'd have to do is just edit our text and we would be done. And then the last thing I want to go over with this is what if you want to extend the duration of the logo sting? Because right now I have it at 300 frames, which is 10 seconds. But let's say you want it 11 seconds, so 330 frames. What you're going to do is I'll bring my current time indicator. So this is where we want it to end. So I'm going to bring on this top panel, I'm going to drag the work area over to that. Or you can hit N on the keyboard and that will uh, drag it for you automatically. And then you can see that I have a, a few markers. This one says logo sting complete. That's just to let you know where it ended at. But this one says to extend adjust these keyframes. And that also says it down here as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit U on this first one on the camera null. And you can see that it says extend adjust these keyframes. So I'm just going to take this second keyframe and drag it over to where our current time indicator is. And then the same thing for this base color layer. I'm gonna hit U. And you could bring this over if you want, but I would recommend grabbing both of these two. If you just did the second keyframe, it would extend the duration of the time that it fades out. But if you do both of these keyframes, then it will have the duration of the fade out the same time, and it'll just have more time right here. So that's how you would adjust that. Let's go over the freeze frame now. And of all the categories, the animation categories within the motion kit, the freeze frame is probably the most unique for the, the workflow of it. Uh, basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting in After Effects. We're going to be exporting a single frame, and then we're going to be running the Photoshop action on that frame, and then we're going to be importing it back into the freeze frame project. So let's do that together now. Let's go to HD, and we'll go to freeze frame. And there's a two-step process to this one select source and then create freeze frame. So let's begin by step one and double clicking on their select source. And it's gonna ask, please select a video file to replace your footage. So what we're gonna be importing now is I'll go to my desktop and what I have is this freeze frame example. And I would recommend taking your clip and cutting it down because you don't want to import like a 20 minute clip into this. Just uh, in whatever video editing program you're using, cut maybe a, a two or three second piece so that you can have enough duration to render out from After Effects the freeze frame effect. So now what ended up happening was it created a new composition called freeze frame source. And within here, it has a guide layer, which we've seen before. And we'll bring the current time indicator over and you can see that it has a marker that says freeze frame master frame, export this frame into Photoshop. So what you would do here is you would have your footage, uh, whatever size you want, if you were using HD or 4K, and you would take and slide your footage until you got to the frame that you wanted to create a freeze frame. So let's just say for this example, I want this particular frame. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to export out a single frame. And the hotkey for that is Command Option S. And it will render out a single frame, a PNG single frame. It can be a PNG or JPEG, it doesn't matter. Composition, Save Frame as File. And that's the same thing as the hotkey. So I'm just going to save this out to my desktop. We'll do a freeze frame. You can just leave it like this. It doesn't really matter what it's named. And I'll close out these other ones for the examples that we had. And now we're just going to run this Photoshop action. So we're just going to do what we've done before in the first few examples. We'll name this background. So we have our background. Now I'll create a new layer by hitting this button right in the bottom right, this new layer button. And we'll rename this brush. And then we'll just paint the section. I'm going to change the brush color though to red so you can see where it is. 
changing this to red, and then we're just gonna paint over, we'll change the brush opacity to 100%, and we'll paint over the part that we want to be. All right, so that looks good. And again, you're gonna get the best results if you do a 4K freeze frame compared to an HD, just because the Photoshop action works better on larger images that are between two to 4,000 pixels in, uh, in, in resolution, and HD is 1920 by 1080, so we're on the smaller side of images. It'll still definitely work, but for optimum use, you'd wanna do the freeze frame in 4K. So we'll just go ahead now and we'll run the Photoshop action. And now it is complete. So we're gonna go in to the reveal normal photo and we're gonna bring back some of the details that we lost. But I'm gonna bring the brush uh, opacity to 50% by hitting five. And we're just gonna kinda of reveal a little bit more than what the action did. I think that's pretty good right there. So now I'm gonna export it using the Motion Kit exporter, and I'm just gonna fast forward this to get back into After Effects. And now the next step that we have to do is under the freeze frame within the Motion Kit is go to step two, create freeze frame. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna use the composition that we created in step one to create the freeze frame. So we'll double click into there. So similar to the reveal animation where it asks you if you want to name the composition. So we'll just name this uh, female. And then it'll ask you, where's the image sequence? So I saved it to my desktop and I named it freeze frame example. So I'll click onto there on the first image and it's gonna do its thing and it is done. So then we're gonna go in, I'm gonna change it to half playback resolution and select the source name so that we can see everything within here clearly. And it's the exact same layout that we're used to from all the other examples. There's a couple of things though, it says edit, 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 edit on here. And that is for if you wanna change the duration of the, the freeze frame. So you can see if I slide the current time indicator over that this is where it starts. And I'm gonna zoom in by holding option, moving my mouse wheel in on the timeline. So you can see that it starts here to kind of transition into the freeze frame. And then we're fully in canvas right here and then we have the reveal start to take place, and then we have, and then the watercolor starts to take over and reveal our object. Now, there is one thing I want to mention with this, and this specific example I wanted to do because I, I knew this would come up, where you might not want displacement on faces. It kind of uh, it gives you an undesired effect. And if you want it, cool, but let's just say you don't want her to look like Quasimodo. What I would recommend doing is turning the shy layers off and we'll go to the displacement and we can turn this off via the eye icon to see which layer it is that's uh, displacing her face in an undesirable way. And it's this layer right here. So then what you can do is you can create a mask. So I'm gonna hit G on my keyboard and then that'll change it to the pen tool or the mask tool. And we're just going to go in and we're going to create a box around her face. And then in the timeline, go to the displacement that we just added the mask to, hit MM, and then where it has mask, you wanna change it from add to subtract. And that's exactly what we're looking for. I'd also recommend going to the mask feather and just putting it on 10 or something so that it's not such a harsh edge. But that's how you can um, kind of select or deselect an area where the displacement is so that we don't have any bulging faces or, or any other element that you don't want the displacement to take effect on. And then it will scrub our current time indicator and we can see that it goes over and then it is gone and then it goes back to our normal one. So then the workflow you would use for this is I would probably just bring my current time indicator to like 250 for example and I would hit N on the keyboard to bring the work area to there, and I would render out this sequence, whatever, H.264, whatever you uh, whatever you want, QuickTime, and then I would bring that into a video editing program like Premiere or Final Cut, and from there, you can just kind of slice that in, that freeze frame, to your footage or movie or whatever you're working on. The last thing that I wanna go over in this video is how do you edit the duration, and that's why I have all these edits. So it has edit, 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 and edit. So these are the, the four layers you're gonna to wanna to edit. I'm gonna turn the shy layers back on so we just have the kind of more so layers that we need to be working with. So if I have these four layers highlighted and to select them, I just uh, held Command and hit U. So then what I would do is I would make sure, you can see that uh, this is at frame 180 where this out is and this is at 194 so it's about 14 15 frames that this effect takes place so what i would do with this is i would go to frame 275 because that's what we said where we wanted to be at 
and I'd bring the out to frame 275 and then I'd go ahead 14, 15 frames, which would be at frame 290 and bring that there. And then I'll bring the end over to there. And then what you want to do is just drag these over to be on the new out, just like it was before. And then this one, this middle keyframe was on the out. And then with this one, this middle keyframe was on the out. And then with this one, this second keyframe was on the out. And we can drag these over just to be consistent with how it looked before. And then we'll just drag our current time indicator over. And that's it. That's how you would extend that to uh, if you wanted the duration to be something different. We are on the last animation category, and that is the slideshow. Go to slideshow, and then similar to the freeze frame, we have a multi-step one here. We have a create base, and then a new slide, and a new slide, no Photoshop. So we'll start out in step one, create base. And all that's doing is it's creating a composition that's three minutes long. So let's say your slideshow duration is gonna be five minutes long. All you do is hit Command K, and that'll bring up the composition settings, and then you can change the duration to however long you want for your slideshow. Now, with the slideshow base HD highlighted, we can click on step two. If we don't have it highlighted and we double click on new slide, it'll say, please select a composition first. And the reason for that is because it wants to know where to put the slide into. So we'll hit OK. And now within the project panel, having slideshow base HD highlighted, we'll double click on new slide. And more than any other composition, I would recommend keeping things organized is going to be key to the slideshow to, to make sure you don't confuse with which slide's which. So let's name this one slide one. And again, for the composition, slide one. And then it's going to ask for our watercolor image sequence. So I'll go to the desktop and I have a couple set up here for us already. And go to the first layer and let it do its thing. So let's actually go ahead and change it to half and the layer name's okay for this one right now. And let's create a second slide. So we'll hit, with the slideshow base HD highlighted, click new slide, we'll name this one slide two. Slide two. Go to our desktop, go to this layer, and we have our slide two. Now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna bring the slide over and begin where that marker is. And then these two slides will seamlessly integrate into one another without you having to do anything. So it's really convenient. Uh, but there is one thing that you have to do with the very first slide. If we double click into slide one, you can see that I have some markers and just trying to help you guys out with like where things are happening at. And, but we have this delete this keyframe on first slide. So what I want you to do whenever you have your first slide is to hit U and then delete this first keyframe. And then drag the second keyframe over to the beginning of where that first keyframe was. That's all you have to do. And the reason for that is just because it kind of breaks that push in, that integration that was set up for you, because we don't want that on the first slide. So if we dig into here a little bit more, we can see that there's really nothing unique about this at all. We have our foreground elements, we have the drips, the text, and they're disabled by default. We have some crosshatch, some design elements in here. We have a brush background that you can change the color to in the effect controls panel. Um, nothing that we haven't seen before, except for these are kind of unique to the slideshow. These aren't in any other ones. So let's go over now adjusting the duration because I, I guarantee um, you're going to want to adjust the duration of some of the slides. By default, they're set up for five seconds, but let's say we want it to be longer than that. Double click into there and I'll zoom in a little bit. And let's say we want the new duration to be um, seven seconds. So we'll set it up right here, so at 210 frames. And I'm gonna change the playback resolution to half. So as of right now, the out and end duration are 20 frames apart, so frame 130 and frame 150. So what we're gonna have to do is we'll go to frame 210 where we want the new out position to be at seven seconds. And we're gonna drag the out well, actually, if we wanted it to end at seven seconds, we would have the end be there. And then we're gonna go 20 frames back to frame 190 and drag the out to there. And then we have a one layer right here, this camera null layer, and then we have these layers where it says edit to extend. So on the first camera null layer, let's hit U, and then I'm gonna drag these two keyframes over and the marker over 
And then the last thing you have to do is drag these two layers over where it says edit to extend and just drag the entire layer, slide it over. And we'll zoom in a little bit to make sure that we are on the correct marker position. And then drag this over the, we can move that now just so we can pull the ending to start on there as well. Now you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to drag the whole thing over like we did for these two. You want to drag it from the end so the icon changes when you have the cursor close to the end of the layer. So right there. We'll zoom in just to make sure we have the right spot. Now, in order to make sure that we have the right positioning within the, the main slideshow animation, we'll move our current time indicator. And it's really cool how, we'll go back in here. When you have the current time indicator in a certain position and you go up one composition within the hierarchy, the current time indicator updates from where that composition was. And that sounds kind of confusing, but just know that the current time indicator is where we need it to be, basically. So we'll go back into slide two and making sure that your current time indicator is on the out marker, we'll go back to slideshow base and we'll drag that marker over and we'll also slide the end of it over to be right there. Now actually we want this to be past it a little ways. So we'll go back into slide two bring our current time indicator to the end on frame 210 and then go back to the slideshow base and then that's the position where we want the end of our layer to end. So that's it. So we've created a new end point and then all we have to do now is we can just create a new slide. So let's go in and to the watercolor motion kit and let's create a new slide with no Photoshop. Now what this is going to do, oh, and you have to have it highlighted. So double click, new slide, no Photoshop and let's name this slide 3, slide 3. And this isn't going to prompt you for the, the Photoshop layers. It's just creating a new slide within here. So if you wanted, and, and by default, the text is on within here. So you can create text elements or you can add whatever you want in your slideshow within here. And it's really that simple for the slideshow. You can create as many of these as you want and extend the duration. You can do whatever you want with your slideshow. There is one more thing before I close this section that I do want to mention though. And we're back in slide two again. And I just want to mention that let's say for example you want the new slide to end at frame 300. Well you'll notice that I don't have the duration of all the different layers set to there. So you might think it would work out to just grab all the layers within here and, uh, and drag them over. And you're almost right. You have to make sure that the shy layers is disabled. And you can just hit command A and you can click and drag it over. But now watch what happens when you hit Command A and drag them all over. You extended this one. So this is the only one, this track mat background layer. You don't want that one to be extended. So we'll drag that back to where it was. And then you would do the exact same process as what we did before with dragging the layers and markers over. Okay, so I hope that clarifies that just in case you wanted to extend it, you know, to 10 seconds or 20 or however long you want that slide to be to just make sure that you hit Command A and then you're also fixing that track mat background layer that we don't want to be editing. We are on the last section. This is going to go really fast because I just want to go over a couple really fast things with you with the assets. If we double click on the brushes, you can see that a new composition opens up and this is just to showcase what the brushes or different elements that look like. You don't have to worry about this and you can actually delete the brush example layer if you don't want because really all you're looking for are these layers, these brush one through five compositions that you're going to be dragging into your freelance projects or whatever. But if you're not seeing things like I am right now, I just want to mention that if you hit Command K when you have an example open, you can see that we have our composition settings and we have this background color. Now a lot of people have this set to black by default. So just make sure that it's set on white and then it'll look like my screen does. Well, that is everything. If you, Again, if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out to us anytime. If it's Photoshop related with the motion kit, then reach out to Seven Styles on his author profile page. If it's related to After Effects or, or anything with this tutorial, please feel free to reach out to me um, just because we're kind of more specialized in our areas and we can probably answer the question faster. He obviously knows more about his Photoshop action than I do and I know more about the motion kit and After Effects side of things than he does. So just to help kind of efficiency wise to get you the quickest answers possible. All right. Thanks again, guys.